This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our flower series. In this video, we're making mini Gerber daisies. The video itself is broken down into steps, so you can skip ahead, rewind, and rewatch as desired. Let's start making the colors for our flowers today. We're using all American style buttercream and the following liquid gel colors. Some sky blue, buckeye brown, and finally, some lemon yellow. I'm gonna start by making the yellow for my petals. So I've just got a little bit of lemon out here on a tray and I'm gonna do some nice little specks. I want a nice kind of light shade of yellow. We want it to show up, look nice, but not be too bright or intense. Give it a nice little lemon meringue vibe with a little bit of brightness and I think that's going to be lovely. Just a nice light beautiful shade of yellow that kind of works for summer, spring, or fall. Next we're going to make just a little touch of green. So I just got a little bit in there and I'm going to do some little specks of my lemon and my sky. And I just want this one to be a little more intense in terms of the value than the yellow we made. We want something that really kind of pops against it, adds a little brightness and kind of draws your attention to the center of the flowers. So I'm using my sky. So it's that kind of aqua shade of blue. along with this lemon yellow to kind of give this green just a little bit of a bright, vibrant tone. It's still a little bit kind of like pastel lime. Just want to go a little more. I want it to feel almost a little kind of like electric or acidic like the kind of green we think of when we think of acid. And that's gonna be nice. So it's got much more color in it than the yellow we made, and it's got that kind of acidic green vibe to it. I think that's gonna be great next to that yellow. And finally, we're gonna make just a little bit of brown. So I'm going to just go in with my Buckeye Brown. I probably don't need a full drop just because we're making a small amount, but I just want to get a bit of, bit of brown in there. We want a nice shade so that we have a nice darker center. But the colors on this are not too dark, so I don't want it to be so dark that it really draws all your attention away. I don't necessarily want it to be black either in this case because then kind of the contrast between the yellow and the center is a little too stark and I feel like it detracts a little bit, draws attention away from all of our beautiful petals. So we want a nice rich brown without it being too dark. So it's just kind of there adding a little bit of contrast in the center but not drawing too much attention away. So I want to stay away from like, maybe like the walnut kind of shades. I don't know what kind of wood this would be. Maybe more of an oak. But just a nice kind of rich brown color. And that's looking lovely. For this flower, we're going to use three decorating bags. They're all 12 inch disposable. Two of them I have fitted directly with tips. And one I have a coupler on because I'm going to change tips. For our yellow, we're using a coupler on our bag and we're going to use two petal tips. They're both small. The first one is a 102. For the second tip, you can use either a 101 or we're using a 264. Either one of these will work and you can use whichever one you have. For a green, 
we fitted the tip directly in the bag and we're using a number one. Finally, for our brown, we've also fitted this tip directly in the bag and we're using a number two. So let's talk about the techniques we're gonna use for our little mini Gerber daisies. We're gonna do two types of petals. The first one are long petals that are narrow and cupped and we're using our 102 for these. And you wanna think about it, we're gonna go with the fat end touching the surface. The skinny end is pointing straight up on us. We've got our bag at a 45 degree angle and the back of the bag is in line with the direction that we're gonna pipe. So the tip is gonna go forward and pull back and the back is just pointing straight towards us because that's the direction that we're gonna pipe. So the fat end of the tip is gonna be towards the center of our flower nail. And when we pull these petals, we're gonna push out towards the outside edge of the flower nail and then pull directly back. And because of how we are holding the bag, it's gonna give us long, narrow, really extremely cupped petals. And when we do this on our nail, we're gonna go nice and quick so that they're skinny and small. For the shorter petals we're gonna make, we're gonna use either our 101 tip or 264. The important thing here is the size of the opening on this one is smaller than the one we use for our longer petals. We wanna create more delicate, petite little petals there in the center. So just something smaller will do. So I used a 102 for my larger petals. So either the 101 or the 264 are both great options. I'm using the 264 today, but you can use the other one. They both work and we're doing our J shaped petals. So the fatter end of the tip is gonna be towards the middle of the flower nail. The skinny end is gonna be facing out. We're at three o'clock with the bag position and we're kind of at a nice little 45 degree angle. And what we're gonna do is start away from the center of the petal we're creating. And we're just going to have the fat end touching the skinny end fucked up just a little bit. And we're gonna squeeze and then pull. So it's kind of a little upside down J motion or a hook. And this is gonna give us these beautiful kind of little wedge shaped petals that we're gonna do in the center. To create our centers, we're gonna use two techniques. The first, spikes. We're using a number one tip with our green frosting. And just like all of our other spikes, start, create a ball, and then pull away while you're still squeezing. Because we're using a tiny tip, they're gonna be nice and fine and frilly. And finally, dots. We're using a number two with our brown for this. So any dot, always up off the surface, squeeze, let it balloon and reach its full size. And then you wanna stop and circle around and away. And that's gonna give you a nice surface on those little dots. So just like any tip we use, smaller the opening, you wanna be closer to the surface. If we were using a larger tip with a larger opening, further away. You always wanna let the frosting balloon out and have some height to it so you get nice full dots. So let's talk about how we're gonna combine the techniques to create our mini Gerber daisies. Now these are a little bit different than how we construct our regular full-size ones, but those full-size ones are pretty big. So unless you're doing a giant cake, it can be hard to really play with them, arrange them, and make nice full arrangements without a lot of gaps. So we wanted to do a nice mini version that's a little simpler, so it's a little different in how we construct it, and it'll be a little easier to play with in flower arrangements if you wanna put some Gerber daisies on your cakes. So the first thing we're gonna do is a nice layer of those long, narrow petals. So right there on the bottom on our nail, we wanna make sure though that we're leaving a gap in the center. This will allow us, as we build up our layers of petals, to angle them down towards the center and give those flowers some depth. So really nice, narrow, close together, all the way around, just work in a concentric circle. I like to go clockwise with these, but do whatever works for you. The second layer we're gonna do is just gonna be a tiny bit shorter. So we just wanna go not quite all the way to the edge with them and pull back. So we'll go a little closer to the center to start. Don't pull out quite as long. 
and then pull right back. And that's gonna give a slight angle to the second layer. The other thing we wanna do with it is only do them every second or third petal. So we just kinda of wanna do them sporadically around here. So not too close together, not every single petal, just every second or third, wherever you think it needs one. And I try to go in between two of the petals that were on that first layer. Next, we're going to switch our tip over. You can use either your 101 or in our case, we're using the 264. Both of those tips will work. And we wanna do those J-shaped petals right there in the center. So these are gonna have even more of an angle to them because they're gonna be resting on both of those layers. So we're gonna be putting those on and pulling them straight down there filling up the center just a little bit more. And we wanna pack those in really nice and tight. So just like our first layer of petals, we're, they're all really close next to each other. Then we're gonna to switch to our number one tip and put in some little hairy spikes right next to those J-shaped petals. So we're gonna work, we've got a lot of yellow there and we're just gonna have this nice pop of bright green that will be right next to the centers we're gonna do with our dots. So with our number two, we're just gonna fill in with some dots. And I find it best to work in concentric circles, outside to end, but really you can do whatever works for you and allows you to get in there and fill in that whole center. Sometimes if I wanna give it a little bit of a domed appearance, I'll go in and put a nice big dot in the center and then go around and fill in with lots of little dots. So you can decide whether you want a flatter center or a dome center to give yourself a little bit of a variation there if you want to on some of your blossoms, make them look just a little bit different without really doing much more work. Now let's give our little mini Gerber daisies a practice. I'm working on my two inch flower nail since this is a smaller flower. I've got my bag set up 45 degrees, the back end is pointing towards me and I've just got the fat end of the tip touching down on the surface. The skinny end, you'll notice, is pointing straight up. And I'm just going to walk myself out from the center. So just about a half an inch. And this is where I'm going to start pulling those beautiful petals. So just, if it won't move on me. Really quickly, we're going to go and go out and back. You can see beautiful little cupped petals. Don't worry if they're a little bit thready on the ends, that's perfectly fine. After each one, I'm just gonna give my nail a little rotate. And once you start getting them on there, sometimes the first one's a little bit difficult. The frosting next to it will really help keep things in place. So just pull back. Every once in a while, I get a little too excited about these and I fill in my center just a little too much. If you do that, it's perfectly fine just to go in, use your flower nail, just clean out the center. If you got a little too excited about the back end of those petals, just make sure you have a nice void there in the middle. Sometimes I get so happy with the way I, they look I pull a little too long with my uh, my tip. And if you have room, let's see, I think there's space, just to do one more right there, just to fill it in and make sure it's nice and solid. For my second layer, I'm gonna start in between two petals, a little closer to the center, and just every few petals Anywhere it needs a little extra height, a little extra drama, just pull one. Just remember to be slightly shorter than the ones you did on the previous layer. And you can see that really gives a little bit of height to these flowers. I've switched my tips on my yellow bag. You want to use either your 264 or your 101. Either one of those will work and we're gonna make our J-shaped petals. So I'm gonna look at my second layer of petals, start about halfway up one of them, and that's where I'm gonna start my J-shape and pull towards the center. So there we go, and just start going around. Nice, beautiful petals, fill in all those spaces. They don't have to be perfect, but you'll notice it's really starting to kind of fill up the center for us. We've still got a void there, 
but it's not as big and there's just a little bit of yellow joining everything together. I've changed to my bag with my green and my number one tip and I'm gonna do my nice little short hairy spikes all the way around so I want to kind of um, almost outline the center for myself. So there's going to be a little bit of yellow in the center most likely. I just want to come out a little bit kind of to where the base of those J-shaped petals are touching the nail and I just want to pull a little bit of green. So just nice and quick squeeze, pull straight up, And I'm just keeping my bag in place and turning my nail. And you can see that really starts to set off those petals. It adds a little pop of color there. If you don't quite get it circular or you need to add some more later, you can always go back and add a little more green wherever you need to after we do our brown. So we've grabbed our bag with our brown and it's got our number two tip on it. And I just wanna start, go around. It's not gonna take a lot of dots just to fill in that center and finish off our flower. If you need to or want to give it a little extra height, you can always give it an extra dot in the middle. And if you find like you've covered up a whole bunch of your green, you can always pick up your bag of green right now and go around and give it a few little more spikes anywhere it needs it. That's all for this lesson. We hope you enjoyed our tutorial on mini Gerba daisies. If you like this one and you want to try a larger, more complex version of this flower, check out our regular Gerba daisy tutorial. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.